Good morning. So, <clears throat> I wanted to make this video a little bit different today. Um, in automotive school, we did a test and tune on a 2010 or 2011 Camaro SS, the 6.2 liter motor in it. And, uh, you know, some of the stuff we got to do in this hot rod class, it was just crazy, unbelievable, like, uh, mind opening to some of the young kids that never seen some of this stuff before. And we did some modifications and every time we did a modification, we would run the car down to the engine dyno, dyno the car, see what kind of power it made. And, uh, some of the, here were, here was the result of the different mods that we did individually and then all together. The first thing that we did was we put this like really, really, really expensive $1,200 exhaust system, like really open, really loud, just crazy $1,200 exhaust system. I forget the name of it. It's something that it, it's like some kind of Asian name, but it's some kind of performance place that makes uh, exhaust stuff for not only import stuff, but American stuff as well. And it was extremely loud with this exhaust system on there. It was like from... The cat's back, there was a slip-in style H-pipe design, and just wow, extremely loud. Gained no power at all on the dyno, absolutely zero. And I think the reason for that is, what a lot of people don't understand is, you can't get any more power out of a vehicle if you can't get, what's the old saying? If you can't get it in, you're definitely not going to be able to get it out. So you can open up the exhaust all you want. The Camaro doesn't have a restrictive exhaust. The Camaro's exhaust restricts the sound, but it's not flow. It's just the baffles and stuff that they have in the muffler. But those mufflers are so large and so free-flowing, there was no real restriction there. The Camaro exhaust is a really, really open exhaust as it is. So there was no reason to start there. You should have started upstream. So the lesson to that was to move upstream. Now, the next modification that we did was something very, very simple. And mind you, between each one, the vehicle goes back to stock so you can really see what the mod is doing to it. The next modification was a throttle body spacer with a vortex twist design. Came with like a special adapter and stuff like that. And, um... That modification was pretty nice, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't think that little spacer would do anything, but you have to understand, now you're taking your plenum and you're increasing it further out. So not only are you increasing this, this spin style um, entry into the intake system that's going to cause it to actually help mix fuel and stuff better as well and create a little turbulence in there, it also increases the volume of your intake manifold so now you have a little bit more reserve available if the engine needs it so it's a it does two things well multiple things i should say there's probably some stuff i'm not even mentioning so there was that and what i ended up getting out of that was like nine foot pounds of torque and like six horsepower just out of that one individual spacer that was put on that intake manifold the second to that was for the intake side this will be the third overall um we took that back off and we put a can in cold air intake the entire system i mean the box the filter um the whole drop in assembly that has to be bolted into the vehicle we ended up getting like uh like 11 horsepower and like two or three foot pounds of torque uh, it, on that individually alone but then when you took both of them together and put them on um I think it was somewhere something like 17 horsepower and like 20 foot pounds of torque with the two of those. So they worked very, very, very well together. The third thing that we did after we put everything back to stock is we wanted to put a fogger system on it, run a hundred shot of nitrous through it. And we ended up just on the nitrous alone, the vehicle. So, so the baseline dyno for the vehicle, um, with no mods done was something like 370 horsepower and 395 foot pounds of torque to the wheels this was 
they're rated higher than that, but to the wheels, that's what we ended up getting, like 370, 390. Now with a hundred shot, we ended up getting that 370 moved out to like 460, 465, somewhere in there. And the torque went out to about 480, 490. Um, just on a hundred shot of nitrous alone. But then here came the kicker to everything. Pull the nitrous back off of it. Put the intake mods on, which was the spacer, the KNN, and then go ahead and put the exhaust on and see what we got. So we ended up getting uh, out of the intake and the spacer plus the exhaust, it actually increased a little bit more. You get a few more foot. Now the exhaust is coupled with the intake and the spacer there was a little bit more power gain, horsepower and torque there because we're increasing what's coming in, which means it would be better for us to increase what's going out. So when those two are met with each other, it makes some good power. So then we took the fogger system and put it back on it and re would it. Oh my God. Instead of it getting like right at 100 horse and like 90 foot pounds, we ended up getting like 125 horse and like 140 foot pounds of torque. I mean, it shot way up there, like, with all the mods together, we were at, like, 500 and, I don't know, something like 530 horsepower, 555, 560 foot-pounds of torque. It was unbelievable. It was, I mean, just basic mods with less than, I don't know, $2,500, $3,000. We'd increased that much power. Almost 100, I don't know, let's just throw a ballpark. It's an, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember what happened. Um, ballpark, let's just say 150 horse and 160, 165 foot-pounds of torque total overall. That was some like eye-opening stuff that all these other guys are out here spending all these thousands of dollars for turbos and superchargers and everything else, and they're trying to do... And granted, all that stuff works. Those LS engines love that stuff. But just for the basic stuff, just basic, less than three grand. You've already, I mean, wow, crazy. But that was my experience with my first um, hot rod program in tech school. I mean, I went to many others after that. But learning how to map turbos and what, what, what your vehicle needs and volumetric volumetric efficiency and stuff like that and yeah i'm not gonna say i'm a professional by any means but just learning about this stuff um it's it's crazy how much these guys have to know in the aftermarket world to make these vehicles run right it's it's unbelievable and uh if you can't you're, you're not going to put out more power if you can't get in enough air to make power Upgrading your exhaust system is just going to do nothing but make a bunch of noise. That's it. You're not going to put any more out if you can't get it in. Remember that. Y'all be blessed.